Common Man of the Torque, 97.1 The Fan. Bo Bishop in for Mike, and it's funny. We've had Gordon Gee, president of Ohio State, on twice. Both times Mike has been gone. Let's bring on our president, Dr. Gordon Gee. Uh, Dr. Gee, are you doing this on purpose, coming on when Mike's not here? Uh, absolutely. My guys, you know that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Hey, a lot of stuff going on. Let's start uh, first with the possibility of NCAA playoffs. I remember having you on last year. And you mentioned that there probably wouldn't be any playoffs in the NCAA. Now, Jim Delaney and the Big Ten, there's kind of whispers of that. Your thought, are we going to see playoffs in the NCAA? Well, you know, I made it pretty clear that uh, I'm opposed to a playoff system, but I also uh, believe this, that the world changes. And, um, you know, uh, I'm constantly pushing the university to think about change and innovation. And so I and I have great confidence in our commissioner. He's going to come and uh, tell me uh, a little bit more and tell us a little bit more about what his thoughts are and um, and so uh, so you, on the one hand you you have a view and on the other hand you have to be clear about uh, the opportunity to listen to very good people so that's where I am right now Dr. Gee Bo Bishop from 10 TV uh, good talking to you here on the radio my friend hey, Bo, how are you I'm doing very well uh, you know I, I guess the cynic in me says when is enough is enough uh, when it comes to this, um, if we go and add another game, uh, Commissioner Delaney talked about a, a plus one or a, a semifinal leading into a national championship game. You're already playing a Big Ten championship game. You're playing a 12 game schedule. Now potentially adding two more games to that. Uh, you're looking at possibly playing 15 games. I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I just don't understand. I, obviously, it makes sense because it's about money. But I mean, when is enough enough? Well, I think that uh, you, you know the problem. The problem is this: is the fact that we have so many uh, different views uh, from so many commentators and the fans and a variety of other things. And as you know, the BCS has uh, slowly lost uh, uh, support uh, among our fan base. Now, saying that. Saying that, um, well, I don't want it to be about the money. I want it to be about the student athlete, and that's always been the the nexus of my objection. And that is not so much about the playoff per se, but about the fact that it extends the season. Now, if they can figure out ways to uh, work this so that it's not a a, a immeasurable uh, extend extending the season, you know, right now before the NCAA, for example, there are several pieces of legislation which says that that everything in terms of league play and uh, championship play has to be played within the confines of a semester. And so there are a number there are a number of pieces in place. See, see the issue is this what we're doing we're dealing with we're dealing with a lot of complexity. We're dealing with fan support, we're dealing with university support, we're dealing with the NCAA uh, now thinking very aggressively about reforming itself. So all of those come into the mix. And remember that uh, the BCS is still in play for another uh, 3 years or so. So this gives us a chance to think very clearly. And again, as I say, uh, we're fortunate uh, in the Big Ten uh, in the fact that we have significant institutions with significant views that uh, can be very persuasive in this conversation. Our guy, OSU President Gordon Gee, joining us on 97.1 The Fan. Wanted to talk to you, too. A lot of stuff going on with you guys. The new office in charge of monitoring compliance. Tell right. us all about what's going on there. Well, you know, uh, I read a couple of the reports, and, and uh, a couple of folks said, well, this is about athletics. No, you know, we had uh, we went through, as I I joke, I can probably joke about it now. I went through a year-long colonoscopy last year uh, without uh, without anesthesia, with all of this stuff going on. But but now, uh, what we want to do is want to focus on how how do we make certain our compliance system for the university works. Uh, a lot of a lot of our fans wouldn't realize, but clearly the most vulnerable area in terms of compliance is our medical center, and then our research programs, and then athletics. And in some ways, is vulnerable because of its visibility. And so so this whole uh, concept of uh, value waiting what we were uh, was about a university compliance system and we've been uh, we think that we've come up with a successful approach which is not adding bureaucracy but is rather simplifying so that we can be much more immediate and much more responsive Gordon, I want to talk to you about your football coach that you guys were uh, lucky enough to hire. My goodness, for this guy to be available uh, at, at the, the university's time of need. And, of course, his uh, feelings about the university also very special as well. But we're talking two months on the job, and I, I don't know if I've seen a more impressive two months on the job than what Urban Meyer has done. As you've observed him, uh, what, what impressions has he made on you? Well, uh, I joked with him one day. I said, the most intense person that I've ever worked with is me until I met you. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, I, I mean, your impression is exactly right. I, I remember very well the interview that he and I had with several others and uh, brought his wife Shelley in, and uh, they, they talked about family and commitment. And more importantly, they he, he went through very carefully why he left and now why he's coming back. Uh, she's Miss Ross County, comes from... Uh, <laughs> 
comes from great Ohio roots, and he's from Ashtabula, born in Toledo, um, uh, uh, Ohio. You know, I'm not a I'm not an Ohioan by birth. I'm a born again Ohioan, and uh, it's, it's like a daggone infection this place. And I think that he's feeling that very much. And and what he's done is nothing short of remarkable. Uh, you know, this time last year we were on our back and uh, in uh, in extremis and. Uh, and it's amazing what uh, great, talented hiring and leadership will do to uh, put the university in a steady place. Uh, Dr. Gee, there was a story over the weekend. Mark Emmert, the uh, president of the NCAA, is calling for tougher punishment and set out some guidelines with reducing scholarships. And I don't have a problem with any of that, and I don't have a problem with what happened here at Ohio State. What I do have a problem with is the punishment being all over the map where one violation could be this, and the same thing could be this. And it yeah. could. Are we ever going to get to a place in the I, NCAA where we know, okay, if you do this, this is going to happen? Yeah. Well, you know, that was, of course, our challenge: is the fact that uh, uh, there was there was precedent, and then the precedent was not uh, clear. A variety of other things. Let me just say, first of all, Mark Emmert is a dear friend of mine. Worked for, worked for me for five years at the University of Colorado, sat in a in a in an office right next to me. So I know his heart is good, and his intent is really to try to simplify. You know, our the NCAA. Rules are are akin to the uh, to the uh, Internal Revenue Code. They're all over the Dagon place, and you can find nuances and ways to get around them and everywhere else. Simplicity and clarity is what we need to have. Then we'll truly have a system that works. Until, uh, but but if you're trying to divine what is happening through a Ouija board, it's not very uh, it's not very helpful. Hey, Dr. Gee, wanted to uh, ask you, there are people out there, when you do talk radio like myself, right. you get a million opinions, and I've been on the record saying during this whole Tatgate Jim Trestle thing that there's no way that President Gordon Gee should lose his job, but there's some people who think everybody needs to go from top to bottom. For the people who are calling for your job, and it's not me or Bo, by the way, you're our no, guy. On the record. Yeah, on the record. Not me. But to those people, what do you say to them? Oh, well, you know, uh, first of all, if you can't stand the heat, uh, get out of the kitchen, number one. Number two is the fact that, uh, you know, athletics represents about 1% of my responsibility. Uh, we just named an academic medical center. We just have uh, the quality of the institution is is absolutely superb. Uh, our momentum is uh, is incredible. Um, and so um, I measure myself by the total success of the institution. The other thing is the fact that people just don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I wish that we would have known more about what had happened. We didn't. Uh, we were surprised. You know, I get a lot of people calling me up and say, well, gee, your athletic director needs to go. I say, well, why? And they say, well, because he knew. Well, he didn't know. If he would have known, then we would have been in a different place. And then they say, well, because of the fact that uh, the, the, the someone needs to be punished, well, I don't know if you throw uh, the cook out of the kitchen if uh, if something uh, if something bad has happened that he that he was not responsible for. Other than that, and then the final thing, I had a guy say to me the other day, well he well he should go because of the fact that you should have given up that uh, that bowl this year. Well, the the point is is the fact that the NCAA was determined to give us bowl ban. We could have given up the next five bowls and then they would have given us the six. You know, sometimes, sometimes what we need to do is we need to be clear about the fact that leadership requires uh, uh, making guess, uh, guesses, and uh, we guessed wrong on a couple of things, but we certainly guessed right on most of the things. And the most important thing is Gene Smith hired the best coach in America, period. Well, Dr. Gee, it's, it's a nice ending to what has been a tumultuous story, obviously, over the last year for you guys. What has it been like for you personally going through? Uh, I mean, there's if, as, we, as we sit here a year ago at this time, there is no way anybody could envision that Jim Tressel would not be the football coach at Ohio State University. What, I, and I know that you were yeah. close with Coach Tressel. I mean, I'm sure it was a tremendous burden for you and for, and for Gene and for others to go through what you went through. But now you're in this spot that's pretty good, or so it seems. I realize next year without the bowl that that's not exactly the best thing. But, but when you think about where this program Program's headed. You're in pretty good shape, but yeah. the last year had to be incredibly trying. Well, I think that I've always, I've always said publicly the fact that it was a very difficult year, not for me personally so much, but for the fact that you spend a lot of time and energy uh, on focusing on a great university. Um, and again, to remind you that that our athletic programs represents one quarter, one percent of our university budget, and to think that it sucks so much oxygen out of the conversation where we were. You know where we had all these prizes being won and all these things being done, and we had our best fundraising year ever, and we recruited the best class in the history of the university. Those are the things that make uh, make life a little irritable for me. But you know, I've been I've been university president for half my life, so I've seen almost everything. But I will tell you this though: this is the first time I've been through an NCAA investigation. I do not intend on going through it again. 
Uh, Dr. Gee, last one for you, and thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, you have a likable quality about yourself, and, and I love you as president of Ohio State. <laughs> but but when you, you know, I have no problem with you saying little sisters of the poor or the Polish joke or whatever. Do you think people take, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous you'd be criticized for, for oh, making Oh, you know, you know, first of all, first of all, I'm, sometime, I'm sometimes unfiltered. Um, but you know something, as I tell everyone, um, there there are three things that I think are are absolutely necessary to be successful university president. First of all, you have to have a very th- very thick skin. If you can't take criticism, then get the heck out of this job because you're going to be criticized. Everyone knows how to run the university better than I do, and tell me, it tells me about it all the time. The second thing is the fact you have to have nerves like sewer pipes when you make a decision, then be very uh, then then stick with that decision rather than reading the blogs and listening to everyone's opinion. And then the most important thing is to have a good sense of humor. And you know, through all this process, I've never lost my sense of humor. And sometimes, sometimes uh, there is a little uh, too much uh, scrutiny over every word that you say, but that's public life, and I just don't want to let it deter me. And sometimes I say really stupid things, but guess what? Um, in the end, in the end, I'm 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 trying to do the right thing, and that's what uh, is a blessing for me every morning. And the most important thing is the fact that I happen to preside over the most important institution in America, and I love everything that I do about it. Doctor Gee, I say eight dumb things a show. Hey, thanks for your time. I appreciate <laughs> it. Have a good week, okay, buddy? You guys have a great. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much.